I've never seen it. Yeah. Keep it to that stuff. <laughs> hey, AI, can I teach you how to stay in your lane? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, well, but let's get right into this. This is Character Study, a subset podcast of the Never Seen It non-existent podcast network. Um, this is Character Study. This is the podcast on the Never Seen It feed. <laughs> Where we pick your favorite TV show character's favorite movies. That makes sense, right? Yes. Uh huh. And I'm here. What if it didn't? I I I'd never know. Do you that ever sit with e- an idea so long that you're like, this has to make sense, and you tell it to someone, and you're like, so, but dragons never existed. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. When you say it like that, I hear it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a podcast where we pick uh, your favorite TV show character's favorite movies. Our last episode was the succession episode, and it turns out that I won when I tallied oh. the votes myself. Oh, I, feel, I feel a lot like Trump af- on like November sixth. Yeah, I yeah. won. I tallied the votes myself. <laughs> I, I did funny. a great I, job. I went and voted for all of my answers on those, and yeah. when I voted, I was actually winning. You voted so. too early. Overnight, we had a big influx of votes from That's the mail in ballots, which that I happens. call my <laughs> other Instagram accounts. Um, the mail in ballots are Bo Straddle's Instagram account. <laughs> The never seen it AG called some people and and threatened them if they weren't going to vote in favor of Kyle. <laughs> That's the most topical thing I could say right now. It is AG. I don't remember. attorney general. Yes, mm. the Texas mm. dude is in yeah, trouble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And talking impeached. about getting pressured is is important for this TV show. Yeah, yeah. A lot of pressure on this TV show. I, uh, we're here with Adam Newman. Thanks for being here, Adam. I cannot thank you enough for having me back. <laughs> being asked once. Is nice. <laughs> Being asked back multiple times, that says a lot about how you feel about me, and yeah. I appreciate it's that. It's always fun to have you here. We're here with Bailey Norton, first time on. Hello, thank you. All, what Adam said, I'm, just imagine me saying that, too. Great, I yeah. will. Great. That's I can do that in post. There's yeah. a quote, you can just you say, can. that's from both of us. <laughs> that's, yeah, we talked about what we were going to say. I yeah. always like to, uh, like at a wedding or something, be like, is my name on that card? Like after vows mm-hmm. or something like that. You yeah. know? Can you, after the vows you yell, that was from both of that's us. That's from both of us. <laughs> Same back, same, <laughs> same. <laughs> Not even the vows after the uh, um, whoever the effi- guy, the efficient. Yeah, mm-hmm. does it? I say that's from both of us. That's nice. <laughs> that's from both of us. The thing that that guy's doing. Uh, I now I got, pronounce you man and wife. That's, that's from, from both of us. <laughs> that's I from me and him. Signs. Yep. I got two power uh, vested in both of us. <laughs> I say from both of us after every word. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was the I, I officiated my sister's wedding, and the tough thing about being like a comedian who, because you, you got to to everyone else in your extended family, that's the thing you are. Oh my god, I know the funny. Mm-hmm. So everyone's like, "This gonna be the funniest fucking wedding." And my sister was just like, "Don't you know? Don't be funny, please. You know what I mean? Go up and do the thing. Yeah, do be normal. Be a brother." My brother did the rudest thing you could imagine at uh, his wedding, which was just a couple months ago. Which is, he said, no speeches. <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. What That's kind of like do? helping some people out. Just no one said anything. Uh, just the, it was a, the rabbi, it was a Jewy one. The rabbi mm. said his thing, and then it was just like, and that's it. And um, no vows exchanged? They separately on their own. Wow. Did they do vows? It was an email. I don't think they really did vows except for the standard what you know what he yeah, said. Do you promise to do this and, and this? Yeah, and yeah I used to professionally write best man speeches. I think we maybe have talked about this before. Uh, it know. was for uh, Laugh Staff was this company, and you could basically hire people to write stuff uh-huh. for you. And I was like the best man and maid of honor speeches, and I would get hired all the time by I mean a lot a lot of people because I I actually do get it. It's the biggest. It's like hiring a snake. Per, it's everyone's biggest fear, mm-hmm. speaking in public. Oh yeah, and you can if you had a bunch of snakes at your house, you could hire a guy to come help you with the snakes, or you could figure out if you can help handle snakes. So people would hire you, and they fill out questionnaires, and you Zoom with them or Skype with them at the time. Skype was a company. Uh, if you guys don't remember that, before the mm-hmm. pandemic, thought no one would want video chat, and they would hire you, and you would talk to them and write the speech, sort of an outline or some jokes, all different packages you could write. You know. Sm- 60% maid of honor, 40% best man speeches. I probably, I mean, I'm triple digit amount of these that I've written. And the maid of honor speeches, the maids of honor almost overwhelmingly would be like, I don't know if this is good and send you the greatest, most heartfelt thing anyone's ever Aww. said in your entire life. Like, but they're just insecure. Yeah. I yeah. don't want to go this to go poorly. Yeah. And they would always be like, because I'm going to go after the, 
the best man, and he's, he's hilarious. So funny. He oh ate a football God. once. Dude. Like, it, it, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've given a bunch of these speeches as a comedian who everyone's expecting it to be funny, mm-hmm. and then I'll have to, like, they'll be like, well, we'll put her first because she's nervous about going after you, and then she'll say the most, like, the best uh, thing you've ever personal, heard. Personal, heartwarming, Unfollowable. cry. <laughs> yes. And you're just like, I just came to make fun of his shirt. And it's, 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 Adam, one time I wasn't even a best man, and I got put on the spot to follow the best man. Yeah. Whose wedding was this? My friend Kevin. And I was in his wedding. I mean, could you imagine if I wasn't? <laughs> yeah. It's just like, where's that dude from school? <laughs> uh, I was in the wedding, and his brother gave the best man speech, and was like, we'll have Kyle do some funny stuff after this. And I'm like, eat. I'm like fucking eating chicken. Like, yeah. what? Do, what? <laughs> So I had to get up and give, I just talked about how his mom took us to an R-rated movie before we were old enough. I saw the first boob I ever saw. Wow. And uh, what's funny is nobody else, the truth about that is though, and I know whatever, you have to follow everybody else who prepared. and But like the fact that you went up and said something kind of dirty and we're comfortable saying it. Murdered. And we're not, like I'm sure you did Murdered. Great. Yeah. Like absolutely. Because we, have crowd we do have that advantage. Kevin's wedding. <laughs> I could have taken the limousine alone. Um, so, wow. so it was, it was almost always the maid of honor speeches. Sometimes it was someone who has no idea what they're doing. And, but that overwhelmingly maid of honor speeches would be like, all I did was connect these like three heartwarming stories from growing up with some like through line metaphor for life. Is you're that crying. okay? You're and you're like, bawling. yeah, I'm like bawling. <laughs> I can't even open the final draft document. I'm bawling at the thumbnail. I'm really glad that you're saying this. I have to give a maid of honor speech. Okay, my, my best friend has three maids of honor. Fun. And I, every instinct I have is to blow it <laughs> in spite. <laughs> Because I wanted to be the only one, but it mm-hmm. is better because you have to like plan a bunch of. You should shit yes and all of their it. speeches. They're not writing speeches. Ooh. Oh, they that's great. They don't want oh, to. I was I'm gonna say you go one. third and you go that was from all three of them. Right, you're the Kendall of these maid of honor speeches here. Yeah. Rap the uh, you rap you make them rap. To the a C. <laughs> yeah, my uh, name's Macy. Yeah. The forty percent best man speeches, over half, were so confident. <laughs> so this is a pretty big subsect. At least a dozen to twenty of these things that I wrote, I would get a speech, and they'd be like, "They'd be like, just let me know if you have any punch ups." <laughs> mm-hmm. And then I'd be like, "Well, you can't call Chinese people that." Oh boy! Oh, like no. that's what it would be. At, uh, Ten times at least, I had to be like, "That's a racist mm-hmm. word." Really? One time, I had to be like, "You can't call. You can't say that word. You can't say that." And his reply was, "The bride's whole family is Chinese, though." And I was like, yeah, dude, no, that's like a big reason why. Yeah, dude, like, let's not go for, let's not go for uh, that kind of edgy. The irrational confidence in best men versus the unknown genius in Maids of Honor (laughs) Mm -hmm. was absolutely bananas. Absolutely bananas. And it was so consistent all the time. But I officiated my sister's wedding. No one, everyone's like, wait, like watching, like, (laughs) you gonna, like, I'm gonna, like, smash a watermelon mm-hmm. at my sister, which honestly would have been hilarious. That would have been <laughs> Damn it, that's a good, I'm going to edit that to something you less You know funny. Gallagher, <laughs> Gallagher had to have done it's a me, wedding. It's me, Gallag him. <laughs> um, and it was just, I thought it was nice. It was My sister's like, just please make it quick. No one actually likes the ceremonies. Get to the reception. And so it was, you know, pretty quick. Go through the things. They did their vow, blah, blah, we're done. And everyone's like, I really thought you'd be up there doing some stand. Why? Why? What precedent has Ooh, ever been set for? Uh, were you, did you get emotional at all? Yeah, I did. Okay. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Because I feel like at that point, they're not, they like, Hold on. Well, you say, uh, jokes. let's do, you say, do you get emotional? I say, yeah, I did. And you say, that's good with like the same tenor, okay? Okay. Did you get emotional? Yeah, I did. That's good. <laughs> What's that normally there for? Uh, the sound effect thing? No, it, that specific sound. Oh, uh, well, it, the, it it has like all the games for Never Seen It on mm. one pad, and then you can digitally, like, it has like pages of pads. And that was for when I had like a uh, show with Bet MGM. We would do like a sports talk show. And I, so I had that one and, um, um, yeah, Alan Iverson talking about practice and then, uh, the Badum Ching and a few other ones in there, like a baby crying. Yeah, that was, that was a lot. Oh, that one cost me 39 cents. (laughs) (laughs) That was worth it. It was good. Um, how do we get on this wedding thing? Uh, who knows? Oh, trying to be funny. A time to try and blah, blah, whatever. Anyways. Mm -hmm. So this is character study. Yeah. We, uh, um, 
we're going to break down the Sopranos. We're going to go through some Sopranos characters. We're all going to pick what our we think their favorite movie is of that character. Mm-hmm. And it's important. This is a very, very important caveat. We uh, No mob movies were allowed. It's funny. When you asked me to do it, that that was my... Uh, of course, you start thinking the old Sopranos guys are yeah. going like old mob movies. Well, because so they, they, they call it's it one role. and two. They just go in one or in two about oh, the Godfather yeah, like yeah. the whole time the show was on. Oh, I thought and... it was about Shrek. <laughs> <laughs> Tony in one <laughs> when Shrek come, when he comes out of the outhouse. Everyone hates part three. Everyone hates. The it right. is consistent. Also, I haven't finished The Sopranos. I'm on the last. Oh yeah. Season. So, so. Bailey is. Uh, I think my microphone's actually supposed to be facing like this. I'm do that. So, but what do we have like? Ten episodes left. Yeah, something like somewhere that. around there. Um, I don't know what, how this microphone's supposed to face. Sorry for all that noise, everybody. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll give a character. We'll alternate who goes first. All right. We'll okay. go through ours. Um, kind of defend it a little bit if you want to. If you need me to look up any information about the movie that you're using or anything like that, I can do that. Um, that's what that button do. <laughs> <laughs> um. All right. So should we start from like the lesser known people and work our way up? Yeah. Does that feel like a good way to do it? Yes. Hey, can I? I'm gonna you you uh, you gave us a character list. Yes. I don't know why you did this. Maybe you have a reason. You left Big Pussy out. Oh, uh, Ratatouille, universally known as his favorite movie. <laughs> That's hilarious. I have that for Artie Bucco. <laughs> <laughs> Artie's our first character. Too. I do. I have Ratatouille um, for. I'll let everyone know the character list. It's hard because you pick like six and then you. Uh, include someone else so you're like well i got to include that person then i got to include sure that sure so you really have to cut it off honestly i got it i got who, it and so, he's out early you know he he i'm um, spoiler spoiler it, look if you're spoiling season one on of the sopranos, uh i would say the only things let's try and avoid today for bailey's sake is sure. the ending okay the I, second I have, half of I, season yeah. six so anything after tony wakes up from his coma after being he shot, wakes up <laughs> kidding, sorry. Uh, I, yeah, no, I got I got nothing to spoil here okay. with the movie choices. Okay. So mine are more based on uh, general uh, vibe of the character Great. you would you would get Great. in the first before the last ten. And episodes. remember, no mobbies. That's what I call mob movies. Yeah. <laughs> Tony would kill me if I was like, you guys like those mobbies? <laughs> that's that's uh, <laughs> Sir Ben Kingsley say? talking yeah. to them. You keep <laughs> calling it the Jodfather. <laughs> the Jod. <laughs> the guy who made it said it was pronounced Jodfather. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm just saying. <laughs> Here's our character list. We have Tony, Carmelo, Meadow, and AJ Soprano. We have Chris Moltisanti. We have Janice Soprano, Polly Gultieri, Silvio Dante, Adriana Lacerva, Jennifer Melfi, Junior, and Livia Soprano, and Artie Bucco. Um, the people who barely made the cut were Adriana, Livia Soprano, and uh, Artie. No, those are good. I'm glad we're doing them. Yeah, I agree. Too. I agree because... Uh, Adrian is maybe the only normal person on this list. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. So we'll start here. We'll go. You know, Adam. What did you have for for your? Well, who what do you think Artie Bucco? I really. Favorite I, movie is? I, Ratatouille popped into my head immediately. He seems like a. I mean, obviously, it's a it's a fun chef movie. He's a cook. He's got a restaurant. A lot of fun things going in a restaurant. He mm-hmm. seems. Uh, mm-hmm. He's kind of out of the mob world a little bit, you know. So you may, maybe I, I think that seems like a. A fun movie for him. I like it. He has no hair though, which seems like if he's putting himself in the Remy position, how that is, is true. He getting? Well, see, I haven't seen Ratatouille. <laughs> uh, I just have feel... you seen Ratatouille or Ratatouille? <laughs> I, would I be lost without it? Um, so I didn't know about the hair thing. If we're going with a bald <laughs> chef movie, if maybe you have yeah. to pivot here. I got to think about a. I got a think, bald chef a movie. Bald chef. Who's the? What's that other? What's the movie? It was, it was a movie called Chef, right? Chef, yeah. That had some people in it, probably. I feel like he's got hair, though. I'm I think John with... Favreau's in that movie, John and he Favreau, plays yeah. himself in The Sopranos, so maybe there's a little bit of, oh. of that, where early on he is just, you know, pulling on Chris to try and get mob facts for some mm. script or something like that. I'm not I'm not sh- changing because of the hair. Stick to I appreciate, no. I appreciate knowing that, but I... Ratatouille Artie, Artie doesn't change his business based on so what fun. would work, so True. I think you can, you can stick with Ratatouille. Ratatouille. Which is, I believe, <laughs> never mind. I don't, I'm not even going to go down that post-9-11 Sopranos oh riff. Um, Bailey, Artie Bucco's favorite movie is? Okay, I said Moonstruck. Oh. Um, mm. Because Nicolas Cage oh, is I like was thinking an Italian. Of oh, no, it's like Nicolas Cage and Cher. And mm-hmm. it, I've seen this like, Ooh, Those might recently. be the two most famous people Artie knows of. 
Right. Like, that might be his example of the two famous people. But this is, yeah. like, such an Italian movie. I saw this, like, two years ago, and I still don't, I couldn't tell you what it's about, but Nicolas Cage is, like, a, a chef or a baker, and mm, okay. uh, mm. he falls in love with Cher, who was engaged to his brother. Johnny. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I'm just looking it up right Johnny now. Johnny Cage? Johnny from Mortal Johnny Kombat? Cage. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I think that's a good one. I went with yeah. Rocky. Mm. For Artie, here's how I picture Artie. Artie is very much, he thinks if you work really, really hard, it'll work out. But really, Artie is an example of if you work as hard as you can, you'll still kind of lose probably. Mm. And that's mm. what happens in Rocky. If you work as hard as you can, you can overcome everything to lose to the guy who was born better at it than you. Man, that's a bummer. Damn, yeah. Artie is a bummer. Is that the message <laughs> of Rocky? I mean, the, the message of Rocky is if you make something good once, you can make a lot more. <laughs> Like Artie's, uh, and also I think that like he's, I don't know if to me he would he would like Ratatouille, but like despise the French. Mm. Yeah, that that would I, I could see that. Um, and just like they turn their nose up at you like that sort of thing. I think that uh, Rocky is just such an Italian American icon. You know, he's not real, so I think that <laughs> that's a big part of of what they're looking for. And so I went with Rocky. Love I could it. see honestly, I could see any of the Sopranos. Uh, Liking Rocky, it was Rocky tough for me to pick decide. For one of my other ones. Yeah. yeah. All right, so there's Arthur. One Boothko, of my other Sopranos. Arthur Boko. I'm trying to think of like a movie where uh, somebody is like an unwelcome guest who is just over all the time. I or al- something. because that like that would be kind of how that restaurant works. I know? almost picked Manhattan for Arthur's Ar- Artie's favorite movie. I'm yeah. like, this guy lo- likes teenage girls when they're near oh, doors. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, uh, he could probably watch Manhattan and be like, the way they converse is just so deep. Maybe sure. the menu. The menu. The menu. I don't think. Oh, there's oh. no world where I see Artie logging into a streaming service. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I also it think was you weird. have to kind of live in the time period of the movie, 2003 ah. to six. But you don't really have to at I all. I was wondering about that. I was like no. trying to play with these, and I was like, you know, no. if... <laughs> If uh, whatever La La Land came out, <laughs> I would say uh, just let let the the show ends when the show ends, two thousand seven or whatever. Mm-hmm. But every they've seen all the like media is current for okay. them, so you can do whatever you want. Got it. Um, all right, there's our Arthur Barthos. Um, next up, Livia Soprano Bailey. What is your first pick? Oh well, I just picked my suicidal grandma's favorite movie, who ended up dying of natural causes anyway. Which is Casablanca. <laughs> uh, funny you should say Casablanca. I also picked Casablanca. Yeah. What? Wow. Yeah. Well, I just I tried to think of a of a the most bummer movie I could think of. <laughs> bummer, <laughs> like bummer Italiany. I I went with Lorenzo's Oil. <laughs> What is that? We had to watch in, I had to watch in school when I was in like middle school. It's a uh, is it uh, <laughs> Lorenzo's Oil is a 1992 American drama directed and written by George Miller. I think Nick Nolte's in it. Uh, is Susan Sarandon and Nick Nolte? Uh, like their kid has a cancer. True life or drama of a father and mother who battled against the odds to save their son's life. This is like a seems like a very self pitying person's type yeah. of, of genre. Of yeah, it's a great here. pick. It's um, a lot of it's a lot of. Uh, <laughs> of just sad, angry, frustrated Nick Nolte. The, the, <laughs> this family, Michaela Odone, or Odone, I don't know how to pronounce it. It probably depends on where in Jersey you're from. Uh, Faith leads her to a cure for cancer. And she mm. saves her son's life. Oh, I didn't This remember. is a really good movie for Livia. She literally emotionally wills herself to saving her kids from a disease, which I think is the level of like... The height she pedestal she puts herself on as a mother. Yeah. Plus, she kind of looks like Nick Nolte. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Only when they CGI'd her after they just made an her. incredible moment of CGI history. <laughs> is Insane. She only uses lines she's already used, uh-huh. and we cut her out of other scenes that have happened. <laughs> it was insane. It was it was weird. Um, but she does kind of look like Nick Nolte and Susan Sarandon mixed up together. So she does. Yeah, maybe she, maybe she is Lorenzo. Yeah. <laughs> I remember we had to read that book in in school, and and uh, and then we had to watch the movie in class, and it was just like nobody, nobody. Margot Martindale's in this movie. She's in everything. I don't remember. I love her. I don't remember. Um, all right, and then a guy named Don Don Soda Baby. Soda Baby. Soda ba- Don had a ba- oh, we had a baby. Don. It's a boy. Is in this movie. 
classic commercials from her. All right, but Casablanca to me just felt like the. She probably just hates everything yeah. new. No, I, I, yeah. that's, I was also trying to. Yeah, the last she would, time I, she felt optimism, you know, I bet. I mean, she's born in like 1930. Is kind of what I pictured. She'd be around yeah. 70 in 2000 when the show starts, if not a little bit earlier than that. Uh, the same with Junior, who I figure is around the same age. I know. I was trying to not pick two old movies, but th- those are those are totally the types of movies I think they would be into. Like, I don't know if you know, uh, Tony Soprano. Um, I looked at like you. He has a favorite movie in it. Yeah, yeah, really? yeah. Uh, but it was like a mob movie. It's like right. a 30s mob movie or something. I think it's called, um, uh, geez, what's it called? That is a tough part about these is he's watching some mob. There are This show yeah. has a lot of movies in it. Yeah. So it's tough to not pick Cleaver for everybody, um, which is the movie Chris is making. All right, we'll move uh, We'll move on here. Uh, Junior Soprano. I want to, this first tier I'm going to call the Boars. Let's get out of, <laughs> <laughs> let's get all the balding duds out of the way early on. Um, uh, I'll go first here. For Junior Soprano, I wrote the Maltese Falcon. I don't what even know what that? that is. It's like a, a film noir movie from the early 40s. So I figured he's probably 12 or 13 when this comes out, if like 10 or whatever. But like by the time he's seen, not, there's not that many movies being made, so this is still the movie when he's 15, 16. Yeah. Want, and, and so I think it's just like a, a film noir movie about like a detective and a like it's like the like hey look at that this dame walked into my office on today out of all days you know what I mean like the movie yeah. that's like satirically yeah. referenced yeah. yeah I think that 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 is what he wants but he's to like do. this is how people talk and it's got like this is a, this is really how I mean it's talk. like Humphrey Bogart and at his Humphrey Bogartist. And and it's just it's the example of that kind of movie. I'm sorry to t- take away a little bit, but uh, I don't know if you you know this. I I went and uh, there's a the, the grocery store Gelson's. I was on my way home from a friend's house the other day, and they had a frozen yogurt place inside called Humphrey Yogurt. Are you are you familiar Stop. with this? It's that's not a joke. <laughs> it was really good. It's in a Gelson's. And do you like do you have Oaks. to fill up like an upside down fedora? <laughs> and and you just weigh that. You just bring in a. F- it you have it to goes by emotional fedora. weight of your performance yeah. is how much you pay. <laughs> it's good. I mean, it's funny because I don't know the yogurt connection to Humphrey Yogurt. Nothing other but than the, the pun. The name. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um. So that's why I, I just went with that because I'm like, this is the noir movie. I mm. think he probably the newest movie he probably like. I think he might think The Godfather is too high of production. Like too that. many special effects. He's like, how the, yeah, exactly. He's like, so you tell me they blew up a whole car? Perfectly good car? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they killed a whole horse for that. <laughs> <laughs> Which you know would set Tony off. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, Adam. I went a little here. different direction. I figured he has seen some newer movies because he's home all the time. He's sure. just home a lot. Watching maybe people. That is yeah, true. Yeah. 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 Maybe. Maybe. Uh, what's the dude's name that always is uh, that's taking care of him? I forget his name. Bobby. Bobby. I think Bobby's bringing him DVDs, Blu-rays. You know, Aww. especially while yeah. AJ's working at Blockbuster. Yeah, they're gonna have yeah. the connection. And I thought, I don't know, in his old age, I think he might have gotten a little soft spot. And you know, they look a little similar, especially when he's got the big glasses. So I went, I went with Up. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love and that. you know, also Bobby looks a little bit like the boy. That's in up. What, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I can see that. Oh man. He thinks of Bobby as his little, little kid boy. just out there wheezing and breathing hard to be let in. <laughs> <laughs> let me in. I love up for Junior. Um, That's very funny. Yeah, I think he cries by himself. You I know, think, I think oh, he pictures a, a life. Percent, yeah, he wishes he had a wife who could die. Oh my yeah. god. Yeah. It's just that one lady that he would never go down on. Tony's. Yeah. <laughs> Tony's Gumar, that one lady that's at his dad's or his dad's grave that one day. Um, I like up. All right. All right, Bailey. Um, For Juice Up. I... That's not a good abbreviation of a name. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, I kind of thought what you were thinking, sort of like older movies. I went with the, the 1940s Phantom of the Opera. Uh, because he loves to sing. Oh he right, does. you're right. He, he sings. He's an yeah. opera guy. Yeah. Um, that's that's a good like point. that's an old movie that he would have probably seen. Uh, and it's he's like a weird single guy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good. Okay. Yeah. Damn, that's a good. Movie. Oh yeah, maybe it should have been like a, like one of the weird. Jack Nicholson movies where he's old and still gets with Helen Hunt or something. Oh, yeah, I picked one of those. What if he's just really, <laughs> really into Rocky Horror Picture Show? Yeah. Junior just loves Rocky Horror Picture Show. Junior's queer. <laughs> oh, no. Coded. Um, yeah. All right, we're going to get to Adriana, Silvio, Polly, Janice, and all the way up through the Soprano family when we get back. 
All right, we're back. Our next character, uh, we're going to start here down you with, with you, Adam. Here on Character Study, going through the Sopranos characters, picking their favorite movies, Jennifer Melfi, Dr. Jennifer Melfi. Adam, what do you have for All right, well, Melfi clearly is, uh, you know, in touch with her emotions, okay? <laughs> I'm, as a therapist, I imagine she, she can get emotional. I feel like she just really connected with a, a new uh, uh, powder. <laughs> what? Powder? What is powder? Powder. Oh, wow. Jeff, 1995 Jeff Goldblum <laughs> sci-fi drama. Oh, I can't believe it's known as a Jeff Goldblum movie. Um, Sean you Patrick Flannery. Mary Steenburgen. Oh, yeah, all the love. All the... I don't... I've never heard of this movie. What? That's not true. I've talked about powder on this podcast probably every single time I've been on it. <laughs> I know. I thought you were just talking about cocaine. Oh. You said you wanted... I didn't know you went to the bathroom to consume a movie. You've never... You've... <laughs> you've... You seriously n- never seen Powder or heard of Powder? The audience here says it's good. Well, the problem is they there's the director is a child molester. So that's a problem. Oh dear, but, yeah. But but that's got nothing to do with uh Jeff Goldblum. So you're telling me the child molester Victor Salva. Yes. This 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 child molester directed Jeepers Creepers. He did. And Jeepers Creepers 2. Two. <laughs> yes. And Jeepers Creepers 3. Oh, I didn't know that he got the third one. 2017. <laughs> Yeah, that's not cool. It's a big 14-year gap. He literally could have had a wife come and go in that time between Jeepers Creepers 2 and 3. Or a kid grow up to be an adult age. Yeah, that's kind of what I was referencing. Oh, got it. Um, Anyway, I think uh, Powder. Powder. Come on. Powder is... I don't know how to defend this. (laughs) Um, (laughs) Powder is about... An outcast, this albino kid who has these powers because his mom was struck by lightning when he was born or whatever. Okay, and uh, you know he's he had a rough he had a rough go, and he stays with his grandparents, and then they die, and he's just kind of down in the basement, and he's got to go out into the world, and everybody's mean to him and bullies him and stuff, uh-huh. and um, and you know he's just a he's a really good kid deep okay. down. Powder, powder, all right. And okay. Jeff Goldblum is is great in it, and Mary <laughs> Steenburgen is great in it. Okay, Bailey. Jennifer and Melfi. you'll cry, I promise. <laughs> or your money back. <laughs> um, I said as good as it gets. For, wow. For mm. Jen Melfi, which is the movie yeah. that Adam was just Crazy. referencing. Uh, I, li- I, the, I literally. Yeah, yeah. man, I, I had that same. I, I thought about that movie too. That's crazy. I think she would really like it. Jack Nicholson is a guy who is like kind of bullish and like weirdly hot for an old guy and has like OCD so bad. I think she's into it. I think she's kind of into him. I think she's kind of into Tony. Yeah, as okay. good as it gets. I went with Kramer versus Kramer. Okay. Mm. Uh, I think she likes Meryl Streep. Oh, Dustin yeah. Dustin Hoffman's a classic. Yeah. She's basically the same age as Tony. If not, no, one, Tony in the show looks 90 and is 11, I think, during the entire <laughs> show. Like, yeah. Tony looks like he's dying, and he's like, I'm 41 years old. And you're like, what are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> So I went with Kramer vs. Kramer. It's just like it's an Oscar-y movie. It's a legal thing. Mm-hmm. It's not like a straight up, it's not a therapy movie. There's not a therapist or anything like that. I think she just likes a really well-structured, well-acted movie. This one also has like family conflict and she doesn't seem to get along. You know, she's divorced from her husband who's a little meekish for her. And so I, I, I see her having a Meryl Streep to Dustin Hoffman energy over her ex. Yeah. And uh, this has nothing to do with this podcast, but I hate Elliot, her therapist. He's my least favorite character. Oh yeah, I hate that guy. Yeah, every scene with him, you're like, what? You're why? Let's talk about a guy who looks like the guy from Up. That guy looks like that guy looks like if the guy from Up and the balloons from Up made a person. Uh, yeah, not a fan of that therapist. If he was my therapist, I'd uh, kill myself just so he felt bad enough about his job as a therapist that he would. But he wouldn't. He would just be like. Sometimes there's nothing. I, I should have passed him on to someone else. Okay, mm. you fucking lazy he bones. He looks so much like R.L. Stein to me, like the Goosebumps oh, author. I don't know what he looks like. He's F.K. Like, Stein. Yeah. He's fake Stein. <laughs> <laughs> He's not the real one. Uh, okay, we're moving on now. We have Adriana I.R.L. Stein. I.R.L. Stein. A- is that A.S.L. Stein? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Bailey, what is Adriana's favorite movie to you? Adriana's favorite movie has got to be Titanic. Um I was so close romantic, to Titanic. Romantic, tragic. She's romantic. She's tragic. It's I was Titanic. so close to putting on Titanic. Yeah. Um, I think that's a great pick. Time-wise, I think that's a good pick. I went with Swingers. She talks about liking Swingers, so it's a little bit of a, uh, of a 
cheat because mm-hmm. she but she talks about really liking liking that movie and I think she just likes I think she really enjoys fun non heavy stories that just sort of you bop on through she loves Vince Vaughn she's like talks about Vince Vaughn all of the time does she and I don't Vince that's Vaughn. Funny. so I went with Swingers because at this point I it's I don't know if old school is her favorite movie um I doubt it but so I, I just I I landed on swingers. I think Plus that she dodgeball. She she. <laughs> <laughs> I think you know she. When they hit, she, 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 I don't know why that was my voice for her. But she, <laughs> when they, uh, that's is that her or Vince Vaughn? Yeah, no, I, yeah. <laughs> is that, you know, I was just doing so like a dude ripped, torn. It's like yeah, <laughs> just like Adriana being like when they throw the wrench at him, it's fucking funny. I think she is smart and um, I don't know. I think she, she definitely likes sort of stuff like that that seems real smart and fun. And I, I went with swingers. I went she with, loves Vivi. I, I also thought she'd like something fun. Uh, I went with Hustlers. Mm. You know, you got you got oh, yeah. J Lo getting fucking older, but like looking awesome and, and sure. dancing and all that stuff. I thought she maybe she'd uh, that's her old job. She'd connect with that. Yeah, I think she would. Think she it was used cool. to be J Lo. She used to do that, and yeah. then I think she'd watch J Lo, and she'd be like, "Oh fuck!" Like she's still fucking killing it. Sure, and she'd get real excited about it. Okay, that's what I think. All right, feeling good about Adriana there. Uh, Silvio Dante, one of my favorite characters in the show. Uh, for Silvio Dante, I went with Saturday Night Fever. I think he likes the style. I think he likes the music. I think it fits the time period. And I think that version of John Travolta is masculinity to Silvio. <laughs> Travolta is like an Italian icon. Um, I'm she's John Gotti, uh, terrible yeah. sorta in that movie, and so I, I, I think that he, I think it's just Saturday Night Fever is a huge movie. I don't, I think Sill likes to go to the movies with his wife. I think they probably mm. saw it when they were dating, and so he holds like a good place for how it makes her happy. Can and so I, I think Saturday Night Fever. I think, I think the second Saturday Night Fever is his Godfather three. Where he's like, we don't talk about that. Movie. Yeah. <laughs> the first one was perfect. The first one is one Why and two put together. Uh, Travolta kind of has a horseish head, and then I think I, I just think he really likes it. I, I, you know, once again, it's hard with Sill to be like, after all, mob movies. Here's where we're at. Yeah. Right. So that's why I went with Saturday Night Fever. Santa Fe. S Fever. S Fever. Is that Svev? <laughs> yeah. All right, Adam. Who's your Sill Dom? Movie? I think Sill. You know, he's a little quieter th- than some of the other guys. I think he go. I think he likes comedies. I think he goes home and he laughs. Uh, he goes home and he laughs. That's what I think he does. I think he likes classic comedies, old comedians. I went with The Jerk. I could really see him. I feel he, like he goes home and just thinks The Jerk very is the much like thing the, in the, world. the thing this guy puts himself through. <laughs> yeah. Like he like watches Steve Martin yeah. in just awe. It's, I get excited when the phone book comes too. Sure. Like he relates to that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I could definitely, yeah, yeah, I like that pick. All right, Sildon Bay. Uh, I put the Karate Kid. I think uh, th- I think he could get. I think he gets into it. I think he likes the the fights. I think he probably like fights along with Daniel. <laughs> I feel ha! like he thinks he knows Mr. The Miyagi is funny. Um, I think yeah. I think Karate Kid. I think he I down would love and hate to see Sil's <laughs> Mr. Miyagi impression. <laughs> oh my god! I bet it's good. I bet it's a according too to good. Yeah. Polly. I bet he has. <laughs> I bet he has no problem doing it in front of other Asian no. people. No. I mean, we know he likes doing impressions of movies already. Every time they let I get out, they pull me right back in. They like that's the whole first season. <laughs> they make yeah, him yeah, act yeah, up yeah, like, yeah, yeah. All right, so for still there, we got those ones. We're moving on to Polly Gaultieri, uh, who is uh, you know just. He he ebbs out of being the second biggest and unknown character in the movie, like some or in the show. Sometimes Polly is such a prevalent character with mm-hmm. huge storylines, and then sometimes he's just going <laughs> yeah. like for episodes in a yeah. row. Okay, uh, Adam, what is your? So I pictured that, <laughs> 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 and uh, he's a huge fan of uh, Mr. Deeds, the Adam Sandler. <laughs> <laughs> He thinks Steve Buscemi Funny. being cross-eyed is the funniest thing in the world. The, when he stabs like the the foot, John Turturro. I see. I don't know if, if based on his time in Pine Barrens, I don't know if he could watch a guy with a frostbitten foot. Oh, that's a good point. <laughs> that's a good point. In a movie without feeling triggered. Yeah. Chris just puts that scene on to like piss Polly <laughs> off. You know I'm sensitive. My foot still fucking tingles or whatever. Yeah. I think that Mr. Deeds is good though. I like Mr. Deeds. Um. All right, Bailey. What do you think? I. 
Man, I picked like three different ones for him, but I think the one I'm going to go with is the Shawshank Redemption. Mm. Uh, mm. I think he spends a lot of time thinking about how he might have to get out of prison. I so like he that. Find himself yeah. in yeah. there. Yeah, that you, makes a lot of sense. You know, <laughs> one million percent, he shoved a spoon into his jail cell wall yeah. just to see if it could. <laughs> yeah, happen. yeah. I I think the way that he would get out is the exact same way that Andy Dufresne gets out with it, just. Digging mm-hmm. a hole through the wall, even if it yeah. goes only into the next cell. Kyle picked uh, Ernest goes to jail for the same reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Earnestly goes to jail. He just goes to jail, like, unironically. Uh, I actually picked It's a Wonderful Life. Mm. Oh, I could see him I being a I think Polly has a very disjointed relationship with parenthood mm-hmm. and with his childhood when this movie came out. I sure. don't know if he loves new movies all that much. I think... His life has progressively gotten sadder year to year to him. And so I see around age 14 when he watched this movie with his aunt mom that he liked it. He thought life could be like that. And I still think he thinks he might figure it all out, Hmm. even though he's like 65. (laughs) Sure. Yeah, I think Polly has a very, like, like romantic side to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, I agree. I think he's kind of sensitive. I think he loves his mom. Yeah. I think he has such a weird family dynamic of he lies all the time about how good it is to not have a wife. Do you know what I mean? He very much yeah. he he lies about that, that all of yeah. the time. He's also such a fucking baby. Huge baby. Yeah. Huge baby. Huge insecure baby. Um, so that's why I went with Polly G and the Funky Bunch. All right. We're going to take one more quick break here. I actually have no idea how long the break's going to be. <laughs> I'm real quick going to message Joe back about this. Oh, chair. Okay, he's, he's gone until Thursday. Well, this chair's not going <laughs> to fucking get sat on itself. <laughs> it's a wonderful life for <laughs> us. It's, it's a, a wonderful, wonderful life for us. us. <laughs> Who's watching Polly? All right. <laughs> All right. How we feeling? Just roll through the Sopranos here and Chris. Yeah. Oh yeah, we're we're back. We're we're now down to the real family. All right, everybody, we are back. This is a funny thing to think about the real family because you keep finding out everyone's related to each other, and you're like, are Chris and or are Tony and Carmela like related and married? Oh man. Because yeah. you see, like everyone, you never know what was an aunt, an uncle, and a cousin in this. Yeah. Uh, we're moving on here, though, to just everyone's favorite character to watch talk on a- ad nauseum, Janice Soprano. Nobody loves Janice more than no one. Uh, <laughs> Jan Soprano. <laughs> this was, I immediately picked something for Janice, and then I questioned it for the entire time I wrote the rest of them, and then yeah. I stuck with it. Okay. Um, is it my turn? I don't know. I just. I yeah, go for okay, it. Okay, I'll go. Yeah, you're right. You're I went with that. Almost Famous. Oh, I can see totally. her liking that movie. I think totally. Janice will force herself to like a new movie. Yeah. I think that she will. She she really really wants to keep up. So it's all. I think almost famous is two thousand one, two three, somewhere in there. Yeah. I think she saw this movie about someone just sort of hitting the road and being like fake bohemian. Yeah. And just yeah, uh, yeah, living yeah. moment to moment, and I, and she's like outside of the band, but a part of the band yeah. at the same time. Like if you watch Almost Famous, you remember the part where the kid kills someone and the band covers it up. Um. Oh, that's her. That's her real life. So I think she like she likes to keep her distance from the difficulties but be tangential to the art world the same with tony's world and the mob she likes to kind of like be able to hop around and she just very much fantasizes and fetishizes bohemian lifestyle so i went with almost famous so just a movie about a kid and groupies and sort of like living in art outside the art life in art yeah no that's that's super on brand for i think her. that's great yeah and it's what she says when she looks for herself on the news stories about tony <laughs> just almost famous janice all right adam uh i went with uh poetic justice with uh janet jackson and tupac you familiar with that movie <laughs> i'm not <laughs> um now know? that i see the poster i remember it yeah just no justification just you figured out for sure no, i think uh I think she's a huge Tupac and Janet Jackson fan. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's similar to, to yours. It's yeah, kind of yeah, like yeah. a bohemian uh, poet kind of She like. will certainly love a movie that is the cool movie to like. 
Yeah, it's yeah. like a weird, very specific 90s movie with mm-hmm. like these huge like music icons, but it was like a yeah, just like a it's a it's a little bit road trippy there too, I think yeah, they do sure. in that movie. I'm trying to remember. I saw it a long long time ago. It just feels like a weird movie that she Janet would like. Janet Jackson writes poetry to deal with the pain of her loss. Like she you don't doesn't it and seem like And then she can't get to Oakland because of a broken down car yeah. and so she gets in a This is this is how Janice behaves. And it also yeah. just seems like doesn't it just seem like she would like a movie that's a little off and like not like really aimed at her demo? <laughs> I think she would really really want to. Yeah, like and she that's just... really what it takes for Janice to like something. Yeah. Oh yeah, for it to like appeal to her sense of like no identity at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, Bailey. What do you have? Uh, I picked Labyrinth for Janice. Okay. Because she does like to smoke weed. She loves weed. I think she probably at one point or forever wants to like fuck David Bowie. <laughs> uh, Labyrinth yeah. is about. A girl who gives her little brother away to the Goblin okay. King. Okay, yes, 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 yeah. yes. Yeah, and then she, it's just kind of like rock and roll, yeah. you know, I think, yeah. I also think that Janice would love a movie for people 12 years younger than her. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah like, this yeah. movie came out in, like, 86. Yeah. I think Tony is born in, like, 1950. 50, I think. And so Janice is, like, 48, or yeah. born in 52, so that she's like 35 when Labyrinth comes out and she's at the theater and the only one. She's there without a kid, without even a kid, though she literally yeah, yeah. has one. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I wish my son could have been here, but he's currently a boy of the street or whatever she calls him. All right. She's in school. Um, now we get into what I call the inner circle, mm. the family and Chris, who I would say are the the circle of the show. Yeah. Uh, we'll go Christopher Moltisanti. Bailey, you'll go first. What do you think Christopher Moltisanti's... F- and and it, it, we're not allowed to say, I'll get this one off, unless you did write it, Cleaver, the movie that he is currently <laughs> trying to produce, or right, it, right. It, yeah. where uh, you're yeah, at in yeah. The Sopranos. I did not put Cleaver. Um, with Sir Ben Kingsley. Saturday Night Cleaver, <laughs> Saturday starring Night Cleaver. Uh, Gary Busey. Are you talking about Mel Gibson's The Clebeaver? <laughs> <laughs> Saturday Night Cleaver is, I don't know if you've ever seen the the bad horror movies, the be- like the Ginger Dead Man. Mm-mm. Uh, I think part two oh, is called yes. part two yeah. is called Saturday Night Cleaver, and I believe part three is called Passion of the Crust. Oh, that's great because the yeah. last one's just about pizza. I completely <laughs> forgot about the Ginger Dead Man. Yeah, it was, that's a psychotic franchise. Yeah, it really is. Uh, okay, so for Chris, I thought it had to be something on the Criterion Collection, mm-hmm. and I picked Funny Games because um, it's hyper violent. It's kind of okay. you know, it's like a psychological thriller, yeah, and. Uh, Kind of film douchey <laughs> and about rich people. Yeah. Right. I think funny games. It's like, uh, uh, yeah, he loves like watching psychopaths behave. Mm-hmm. Uh, for Chris, I went with Field of Dreams, oh. but he doesn't understand the father figure motif. Mm. That's so funny. I think he watches Field of Dreams. He's like, Tone, they just, just all these, look at these. They actually got Babe Ruth. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> How did he disappear in the corn? Like, I think he very mu- he's very surface level. How a nine-year-old would enjoy Field of Dreams because the baseball is funny. I don't think he understands at all the she multiple father figure dog. things. I don't think he gets that. At- he's- it's funny when the kid falls off of the bench uh-huh. to him. It's funny that baseball is played in a field. He's like, they could make money selling tickets to this. Yeah. You could really make money selling tickets to this It's actually a good business idea. I know. He like, I think he watches Field of Dreams and does not understand for a fucking second why he it is a movie that like he has to un- be around. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to tell you mine now, and I picked a different movie, but your, your uh, additional... I literally wrote, and you can see, I don't want you to see my things. I wrote Fight Club, but he doesn't get it. Yes, and I think that's very, very, yeah. very true. Like, he's yeah. he's watching Fight Club like a night. It's just the fights are cool. The, everything looks cool. Yeah. The fights are cool. The blood is cool. The we don't talk about it. The house is cool. Right. The making the soap is cool. Yeah. But Tony, like, the way they, get they, they were able to pull these jobs by not talking. Yeah. So and then I understand. Like, yeah. Like, so uh, he, he blow is, up the banks. That's actually like a good idea. And we yeah. could like it's all a good idea, but he doesn't get the whole other part of the movie. Yeah, there's no irony which is that to, there's it to a, him. There's a father figure who wants to just play baseball with his son. That's fight bat. <laughs> um all right, there's Chris. Now we're moving on to everybody's favorite son, AJ Soprano. Uh, I think I'm first here, right? Yeah. 
AJ Soprano. Uh, this one was the only one I think maybe had a correct answer, so I might have. The Matrix. His favorite movie is The Matrix. Funny. Everyone mm-hmm. dresses. His 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 style is always someone from The Matrix mm-hmm. or someone who listens to the soundtrack. Joey to Pants the is in The Matrix. Uh, I think he likes The Matrix. He gets his mom a copy of The Matrix for her birthday. Does he really? Is yeah, that a real thing? He gets her a DVD oh, of The yeah. Matrix, and That's she's funny. like, "Thanks, I haven't seen this." And he's like, "It's good." And then he takes it and goes and watches it, <laughs> <laughs> which is like the ultimate shithead. 11 12 year old thing to do right yeah yeah and he i think he just likes i mean he's born in 86 so he was 13 when the matrix came out that's gonna be your favorite movie i i mean i uh, yeah i was a huge matrix fan when i was a kid so i'm going with the matrix for edge soprano nice that's good um i went with i don't ha- i didn't pin it down to one because i'm not familiar with them but i just imagine he his favorite movie is any one of rob zombie's horror movies great Great. House mm-hmm. of a Thousand Corpses. Sure. Mm-hmm. Any of these, like, Hills Have Eyes. Yeah. I don't know if that was Rob Zombie or not, but, like, that, I don't know. that vein but like of, a like... a Saw movie or right, something. Right, right, right. Like, yeah. like uh, uh, not, not, like, porn core or, like, type of horror, yeah. but, but, like, blood Yeah, core what's it called and, when it's just, like, overly violent? Like, right, right, right. Like, uh, like hyper- just vi- gross out. Hyper-violent yeah. sort of gross stuff, for sure. For, I yeah. mean, he's, like, wears Rob Zombie shirts. Yeah. in the show for yeah. a couple Marilyn years Manson shirts I think are in there yeah. a bunch yeah. too so I think any of those like super gross out if you want to for my answer though I'd go with uh, I'd go with any of Rob Zombie's things great that's good I, I picked uh, Donnie Darko also great yeah that works too uh because I think he's just constantly dissociating and maybe doesn't even... He gets yeah. it too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He turned on Donnie Darko one second, and he's like, it'd be crazy if a plane engine fell through that kid's house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He also is the kind of kid that cellar door would blow his mind. Yeah. Like, thinking, oh, that is the most beautiful phrase. Like Because yeah. he, he, like his dad, grabs a nugget of shit he doesn't understand and forces it into conversation. Yeah. So I think, fuck, that's a good pick. I... That's exactly how smart he wants to be perceived. Yeah. It's exactly how he wants to come off. Damn, that's a good pick. He, but he calls him Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Gake Gyllenhaal? <laughs> yeah. And Maggie Gyllenhaal. Mag- yeah. Maggie. <laughs> uh, all right, we're oh, down man. here to you. At, that's a really that's funny because, uh, yeah. We For Meadow have, Soprano. Janice could have liked the secretary. But anyway. <laughs> oh, Meadow. Janice could have liked Meadow? Donald Darko, too. I think Meadow probably liked something that was, like, actually – Kind of cool, like kind of cool, kind of indie at the time, not too, like a, like Juno. I see her being mm. like into like Juno. That's my thing. Okay. Mm. I could see that. Something that's very much of not her family. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But of her age and, um, right. yeah, I think she, I think she'd look at that and be like, that's okay. normal cool kids. <laughs> Teen pregnancy. And a, a <laughs> look at how he person. says jive in her burger phone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Michael Sarah technically a boy. She would tell her parents is in Thailand. and Carmelo would be like, you know that movie was written by someone named Diablo? You can't go <laughs> see can. that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um what did I put? Oh, I put uh Clueless. I also think, a great pick. I think yeah. she would be super I think that's like a slumber party movie for her. Uh I think that she likes the oh god, what's his name? Uh Paul Rudd. Paul Rudd as like the lawyer. You know, like trying to be a lawyer. I, I yeah. Cher is super rich. I sure. think she loves Clueless. It's I a great movie. I think that's great. Who doesn't love Clueless? Who doesn't? If we're being honest. I went with Freedom Riders. Oh, I don't know that one. Freedom Riders is the <laughs> movie where Hillary Swank goes into an inner city school and saves uh, <laughs> oh. a bunch of kids. Oh, yes. you mean like a bunch uh, of inner city kids? Dangerous Minds too. Right. I just I figured she she is for sure a twenty four year old towards the end of the show, sucker for white savior movies. Mm-hmm. Oh, that and makes so I sense. think she watched Freedom Riders and she's like, This is what I do every day. I don't judge people for having head scar like you know what I mean? She's mm-hmm. like, I people come in and I don't even judge them for not being me. <laughs> like I'm I they're all one of the good ones in my eyes. Like very much like <laughs> Yeah. She, I think that she is unfortunately like her mom in that way. Where, but I, you know, in a more progressive way than than her mom, who is a bigot, yeah. and so yeah. I went with Freedom Riders. I think she sees this and she's like, "Mom, you don't understand." And then Carmelo would watch it and be like, "She's just not getting paid that much to work there." <laughs> like, <laughs> like, how are you gonna live on it? How are you gonna support um, yourself on teacher salary? So I went Freedom. I think Hillary Swank is right up her her alley for maybe her favorite actor. I just think because Hillary Swank's always playing like very strong forward leading roles. 
And, uh, you know, Meta wants to help people. Mm. And she thinks that, like, taking her a little bit of money somewhere else will help people. And it does. Yeah. It's just so much more than her family. If, yeah. everybody, <laughs> if everybody would do that a little bit. Yeah. Um, all right. Moving on to Melosop here. <laughs> Carmelo Soprano. Who are we? Is it you, Bailey? I don't know. I, I, I just went last, so I think it is Bailey. You're up. Okay. Uh, for Carmela, I picked The Sound of Music. Great. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. For hyper her. Catholic. Great. Very appropriate for all ages. I think she likes the songs. Yeah. I think it's the easiest movie for her to watch. I think that's a great pick. Uh, I went with, I could not narrow it. I went with Grease mm. or Titanic. And I'm leaning more Titanic as time has gone on because I think she loves a movie where a woman gets to watch the guy she loves die. <laughs> oh, okay. Sure. I yeah. think at the end she's like, she, I I, there, I, I think for most of the then show. why not the drop? <laughs> I think for seasons two <laughs> through four to, or five Tony's of the show, the, oh, she really wishes Tony would die. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. So she could go, cause, and she's looking at, like, uh, um, Angie Bump and Saro and how she gets to run a body shop after Big Pussy dies. Yeah. And she's looking at, like, Ro, who, like, gets to kind of have some freedom and jokes around after oh. her 75 or 80 husbands die. I think that, uh, I don't think that's the main thing that draws her to Titanic. It's a huge movie. It's She loves young love. Mm-hmm. I think it's just, it's you know, two VHS tapes is something she's probably into owning because it looks big and expensive. <laughs> yeah. When she's ta- telling AJ's friend about a, like, $5,000 lamp she has for no reason, yeah. I think she likes the largeness of it, the money of it, the spectacle of it, and I think that she also likes being able to see a woman hook up with the poor version of the rich guy she's supposed to be with. Mm. Mm. Leo might be the Furio of that movie to her. Mm, that's great. Uh, so mine was based more on her thing for Furio. I was like, she's she's got a thing. We talked a little bit earlier on this same podcast about uh, <laughs> uh, the uh, ideal ideal man for, uh, like you were talking about John Travolta is who mm-hmm. like- uh, Like Sills, I, like- yeah. yeah. So I had a tie for Carmelo for to go in a more sensitive movie. I couldn't, because I, I can't remember the difference between the two movies, but I'm between uh, Michael and Phenomenon. There's two John Travolta movies from, like, the 90s. Yes, okay. One of them, he's an angel, and the other one, I think he's got, like, a brain tumor, but it gives him special power. Something like that. <laughs> but either right, way. but they are, like, little, little... Uh, uh, they're sensitive John... It, it's almost like quasi-religious Jesus God stuff gives yeah. you super abilities yeah. within a love story. Yeah, and you're gonna cry. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's John Travolta. Okay. A more mature John Travolta. I think those are all great for her. Uh, we know she doesn't like... Uh, good movies. <laughs> no. I think she, remember she tried What it. if she Remember her movie club, Citizens Kane? Oh, or yeah. Citizen Kane, they watched it and she tried to talk about it for a minute and then <laughs> no one liked it and she was like, okay, let's move. Like, they just wanted to yeah. talk about something else instead. So she, at least she did give, like, Citizen Kane a uh, educational analytical shot. Sure. The truth is, like, we, we all know people who, and maybe we did, uh, whatever, like, I grew up, uh, my our house, we didn't look anything like the Sopranos, but, like, I do, like, look at that house and I'm like, my parents tried to fill it with nice stuff and, and like, that weird kind of, you think columns mean it's nice or something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like, I look at their house and I'm like, man, uh, and that, that, like, 90s, early 2000s, and I think of, like, my parents at home and, like, they would just, they would weirdly fall on movies that were just, like, playing on, like, TNT or yeah. A&E or something. I'm like, they're, some of the movies that they like are so out of nowhere. It happens because, in yeah. The Sopranos a lot where they're like, I can't. This is on. Yeah. You're, like, you're just watching I'm, A Few I, Good I, Men I can't on get TV. Up. I'm it's watching weird. The Fugitive is on. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I can't get up and eat. Yeah. Because, well, what am I going to – how do I get back to this? Wait till <laughs> yeah. next Thursday <laughs> to watch The Fugitive again? Um, speaking of A Fugitive. Hey. Uh, we are to Tony Soprano. Himself, this uh, uh, for me for Tony Soprano. I went with High Noon. Oh, and, I don't know. Uh, High, High Noon is a Gary Cooper movie. Who Tony references the entire show. Whatever oh, happened yeah. to Gary Cooper? Whatever happened to the strong, silent guy who just does his job? What's the Gary? He talks about the Gary Cooper type all the time while he's complaining and bitching, which is the opposite of what Gary Cooper does. So this is a, this is like a Gary Cooper movie where he is a uh, a guy who used to be a marshal. Who basically has to like take on a bunch of th- of like Western thugs, like 
like in a Western movie, right? So this is like Gary Cooper won a best actor for this movie. It's like the huge sort of like if it's like the huge quintessential like the Maltese Falcon is the noir example. High noon would be like the every man guy saves the western town example I, of a movie. And does, he loves Gary yeah. Cooper so much. He talks about him eight million I don't know if he does love him or if it's a crutch he's convinced himself of, but he talks about Gary Cooper all of the time. Mm-hmm. And this is Gary Cooper's Gary Cooperist movie. I know that because it's the only one I know. So it has to be. <laughs> <laughs> and so that's I went with High Noon. Uh, once again, because mob movies are off the table. Right. Because what was his movie? His favorite movie in the show is uh, Public Enemy. Yes. Which I have not seen, but I believe it's a 30s. It's like a, a hey, look at that guy. Yeah. Like Tommy Gunn type of. Mm. Mm. But he also just, he loves those slapsticky things, too. He loves the old stuff. He has the sense of humor of a four-year-old. Yeah. But I think he has the emotional um, breadth of a three-year-old. So that's why I went with High <laughs> Noon. <laughs> nice. All right, Adam? I went with Straight out of Compton. <laughs> because I think I think he was probably, he probably got the screener, right? And uh, he wasn't going to watch it because it's not really of interest to him. But he did watch it, and it just kind of surprised him, and he was on board throughout <laughs> the whole thing. He loves the and- movie where a son plays a dad. <laughs> <laughs> and then, lo and behold, the, the many saints of Newark or whatever, <laughs> his son plays him. <laughs> I, I, think, I think if he watched that, he'd be like, all right. The music surprised him at how much he liked it. Sure. And uh, I hate cops. And he hates, <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's some stuff. There's some stuff he could relate to as far as kind of, uh, you know, uh, making moves outside the system. We so just I think he'd appreciate it. The Plus, episode, I think, yeah. yeah. The episode where he's up in the hospital and there's like a rapper who gets shot so he gets more famous. So then Bobby Bacliar wants to like shoot another rapper to get him famous <laughs> as like a little side bit hustle. Yeah. But the rapper is like, Tony's like, hey, thanks for the CD for my kid. And the rapper's like, for Tony Soprano, anything. You're an original OG or whatever. And Tony goes, eh, whatever. And <laughs> Just like keeps talking to some guy with it's no so throat. Good. I think I think I think Tony Soprano would watch uh, that movie and um, and be like, okay, this is a lifestyle I get. Like and, this face uh, he always makes. <laughs> yeah, that's he's kind of like processing something and like changing his mind, weighing things out. In real now, time. What, what are some words he would use in his review of the movie? Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Uh, he does like when people just do what they want to do and then figure out the consequences. Yeah. Like when they would play uh, fuck the police and then mm-hmm. blah, blah, blah. I think he would think they have, I, I think he'd be like, these guys got a lot of balls. <laughs> sure. These guys got a lot of gabagool on those balls. He is. I'm going to eat them off. I'm going to eat the gabagool off those guys' balls. <laughs> Tony is a massive racist until someone I know, makes I don't... any money. Yeah. yeah. And then he's like, well, that guy, that's one of the good ones. Don't like you think it, he would watch? Like, I think he would watch that movie and be like, "There's got to be a way. If, if I'm, there's got to be a way, I can get a piece off these sure. guys." <laughs> yeah, talk to Hesh. Yeah, <laughs> Hesh produced all that shit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all right, Bailey. Okay, I changed mine. I changed mine from because you also had straight out of Compton. <laughs> no, I for the first half that I was like filling these out, I had Tony's as Sea Biscuit. <laughs> okay. But I, honestly, I think Rocky is his favorite movie. I think mm. he, I think he loves it. I think it's fun for him to watch. I think it's easy for him to root for. I think he like really relates to Rocky. He definitely yells Adrian. Yeah, <laughs> like, there's no yeah. world where he doesn't do that. Yeah, aid. Um, He's and he also watches like I could be like that. I just uh, I die yeah. it. I just can't. When he I can't yells do Adrian, yeah. Chris just gets a little more suspicious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing in the car? <laughs> Yeah, I think Rocky. I, I I definitely think I, I think there's no way that Rocky isn't top four for everyone we talked about. Yeah, I bet they all even agree including on Rocky. Melfi. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. top to bottom, maybe Janice would deny it, but top to bottom, I think Rocky is in everyone's top four. Yeah, you're all um, proud Italians. Because legally, he was the only Italian on TV up until like 1997, I think. Really? No. <laughs> Why would there be a law? I don't know. <laughs> Ninja Turtles. Are they Italian or they just like pizza? (laughs) (laughs) Okay, everybody. I was trying to think of a fucking uh, uh, like Howard the Duck or something for because I know he likes ducks and I think was there Howard the Duck. (laughs) (laughs) I know he likes ducks. Yeah, but the Howard the Duck came out so far before he loved ducks. Yeah, he cries. 
seeing Howard the Duck's cameo at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> Uh, hey, everybody, that's Character Study. Thank you so much. We're going to put up some stuff either on Instagram, Twitter, blah, 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 so you can vote and see who who picked the rightest movies. Maybe instead of voting for every character, I'll just put the three of our choices and you pick who you think did best. Oh. That seems like less voting. Mm. <laughs> or at least tabulating on my part. Okay, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, Adam, tell everyone where to find anything there. <laughs> I blow this every fucking time on the thing. <laughs> Uh, I got a special coming out in probably a month or two. So if you follow me on the stuff, <laughs> Adam D. Newman on the Instagram and the TikToks and, uh, follow me. I have to fucking start a, uh, what do you call it? GoFundMe in the next few days for medical shit. It sucks, but please, uh, Ooh. go look at that. It's for my wife. It's not for me. Okay. Sorry to do that. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. Great. Bailey, anything uh, as important as that? No, no. <laughs> In fact, unfollow me. (laughs) (laughs) Bailey E. Norton, hit that unfollow button. Thank you. Great. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Go find an Instagram tour, blah, blah, blah. I've never seen 